So I'm here in Oklahoma for several reasons. I want to meet uh, with a number of faculty members and a number of civic leaders about the arts and the humanities here. One, I want to learn from them, and it's been a, a great uh, uh, experience this morning to see incredible uh, European art, to see Matisse, to see Degas, to see Van Gogh here. Uh, so I would spend my whole day at the museum um, at the University of Oklahoma campus if I could. Um, but also, I want to hear about their projects as professors. What are what projects do they want as collectors in the uh, of uh, rare books? What projects as writers, as historians? Um, the graduate students, what are they working on? Uh, what are their interests, and also what are their needs? And so that's something I care a lot about. Also. Not just telling them here are the grants we give, but reminding them that the Oklahoma Humanities Council, which we fund, is an important anchor for their funding, too. Uh, we have given $9 million to the state in the last 10 years, but a great deal of that has been with our state humanities partner. I often say to somebody in an elevator pitch, if they say, what are the humanities? And I say, do you like Ken Burns' documentaries? Do you see them? That is the humanities, and we fund him. In fact, we fund have funded every single film that Ken Burns has done uh, since his first film on the Brooklyn Bridge. And so the humanities, people think naturally of history, and the anchor fields are certainly history, literature, uh, but also political science, government, archaeology, anthropology. In the university, what we think of is the liberal arts. Uh, but it is, it is, the arts, it comes close to the arts, it's criticism of arts, it's, it's evaluation of arts, it's biography, um, but it's not the creation of art. It's not the creation of music, uh, but it's the history of music, for example. What parts of the humanities maybe do you see as um, in particularly important now or what things that the humanities are doing that maybe are um, needing to be shored up a little bit? Absolutely. I think we're in the midst of a time where a lot of people are talking about what do we want the direction of our nation to be. I do not believe you can answer that question if you do not know the foundation of the nation, if you don't know our ideals. And at the same time, you have to have a sense of when did we fall short of those ideals? How did we get to a civil war? Why, did, why was this civil rights movement necessary? What was going on in our society? And so the humanities are a way to talk about that. And by the way, to talk about it in a non-divisive way. It's the point I really drive home to the peop uh, people all the time. The humanities are not a luxury. They are vital. They're not frivolous. They're not divisive. They're vital. And if someone says, how so? And, I, and I'd say, for example, we preserve the presidential papers. We're preserving Edison's papers, Mark Twain's papers. I, you could not tell the history of technology. You wouldn't have the conversations we're having about artificial intelligence if you didn't have these great thinkers. And by the way, if we're going to talk about artificial intelligence, if we're going to talk about the influence of social media, we're going to get it wrong time after time in these corporations if we don't have somebody trained in ethics. Ethics is a core humanities field. So you put in the room, you're going to have a lawyer. That's jurisprudence. That's a humanities field. Ideally, you're going to have an ethicist, and, and yes, you're going to have an engineer. And through history, the, the great engineering marvels were often somebody deeply, deeply trained in the humanities. Uh, so Einstein, for example, was somebody who was very clear about that creativity was just as important to him as the sciences, and his creativity was rooted in the humanities.